Now here's a question for you steelhead fishermen out there. Why is orange such a prominent color in winter steelhead patterns? I imagine it has something to do with the water temperature, the clarity, maybe the light conditions, and those type factors. Or is this even a thing anymore? I know in some of my older books, like this one by Dave Hughes from 1986, most all of the winter steelhead patterns in here are some combination of orange and red. Whereas the summer ones are more blacks and purples and blues. So if you've got any theories on this, please let us know in the comments. But either way, I've got a cool one from this book for you today. The pattern is called the Golden Demon. Now it's not a hard tie, but I think it's a pretty sharp looking pattern. Now one last note, if you're not a steelhead fisherman, no worries, tie this thing as a trout streamer or tie it as is and fish it for smallmouth or even big mouth bass. You can target a lot of species and get a lot of mileage from a pattern tied in this style. So there it is in the vise, a golden demon winter steelhead pattern. Now, not too elegant, kind of cool looking. One critique on this one, I think I got a little bit too much of that golden pheasant crest in the tail there. Let's see if we can do a little better on this one. Go ahead and pinch my barb here and get this in. I'm gonna step my thread up to a 140 denier. I'm gonna keep it black. I'm gonna catch it in right behind that little bend right there. We'll try to fill some of that in in just a second. So go ahead and catch it in and take it to the start of the hook where we're gonna catch in our tail. Now I got a little smaller tuft of this golden pheasant crest right here. And one, it's not always easy to get these where they're curved up. Sometimes it takes you a couple of tries. And you know, in the big picture, it probably really doesn't even matter. It does look a little bit better if you can get them curved up. I think we're fine right there. I'm gonna take some loose wraps just to try to get a smooth little area right there because we do have a tensile body. Now let's take our thread back up here, right behind that bend. And we're gonna catch in our rib next, which is an oval gold tensile. This one's small. And what I try to do here, just try to catch this in on the side, just a little bit aft of, you know, that bend. And sometimes it'll help fill in that little gap. Sometimes it doesn't, but you know, I usually try anyway. So let's catch this in all the way back. I could have probably caught my mylar in at the same time, but we'll be okay. Just take your thread back up here. Now I'm gonna catch in a, this is a medium mylar tinsel, gold on one side, silver on the other. And we want a gold body here, so let's catch this one in with the gold side toward the hook. Just a couple wraps there, and now we can, just some open wraps going back. We don't want too much thread build up here. I mean, it's a, a salmon fly. We do want it to, to sink, but we also don't want a real thick body. And so you can see that there, I didn't really close that gap up too much, so I'm gonna put a couple wraps over it and just a few right here. I'm gonna leave my thread a little bit after the eye because we do have two components up front. But now let's just go ahead and wrap this body in one turn right in front of the other. You don't really need to worry about overlapping them. Now when you're happy enough with that lumpy body like I got right there, let's go ahead and wrap this rib. I'm gonna counter wrap this up and you know, five, maybe six turns on this size hook. It's not a perfect underbody right there, but you know what? If I was active on Instagram, I don't think I would put this one up there anyway. Now we've got two components left, a throat and a wing. I'm gonna go ahead and do the throat first. Just a bright orange, a couple of tufts of bright orange fibers from Strong Saddle Hackle. Now this might be a little bit more than the picture in Dave Hughes' book, but I kinda like a big throat. I'm gonna go through the trouble of of putting one in here, I really want it to be noticeable. So let's do a pinch wrap here. I'm gonna cord my thread up just a little bit so maybe I can get a, a tighter bite here. We'll do a couple of wraps and then check it. Not too late to readjust if you need. I think we're fine here. So one more to, let's do two more to lock it here and then snip this front excess off. Now a couple wraps to just smooth this area out right here. 
I'm gonna leave my thread just right at the front of that beard for the next component, which the recipe says you can use brown bear hair or red squirrel tail. And I'm gonna go with the squirrel tail. It's just a little bit easier to stack and more people probably have squirrel than bear. But squirrel tail is slippery, so you might wanna put just a little bit of wax on that first inch or so of your thread and put it in your stacker. Let's see if this stacked very well. I think it's gonna be close enough. Now this is not a huge amount, but it's not insignificant either. I'd rather air to be in a little bit chunkier. So the length of it is about to the back of the bend of the hook, not so far back as the tail. And I'm going to cord this thread up again, and that'll give me a tighter bite. I'm gonna go with a pinch wrap right there on top. Let's do two and take a look at it. Okay, I think that's gonna work. We'll put a couple tight wraps going back. And now just a couple to really bind it in before we snip this excess off up front. Now you might wanna take your fine tip scissors and just go in here and if you've got a little bit left, this is gonna give us a pretty big head, but that's really okay. You see a lot of salmon flies that have pretty big heads. So let's go ahead and put a few wraps right here. As long as we can get our big fat 4X tippet through here or whatever it is that salmon or steelhead fishermen usually use, I think we're gonna be fine. And I think we can get our tippet up through there, no problem. Let's go ahead and whip finish, see if we have any cleanup. And I don't think we have any cleanup. We've got a couple of rogue fibers coming up there out of that head. But we can take care of that with our head cement or UV resin. So there you go, Golden Demon winter still head pattern. I think it's a pretty cool looking fly. Now I appreciate you watching. Y'all take care and we'll see you next time.